this is a really cool story. I was looking for pigs, right? And I, I, I wanted some pigs to raise for bacon. Um, our pigs are, are grown up now and we're gonna process them. So we need some new ones uh, for next year. And I found a listing on Facebook and I messaged the guy, his name was Isaiah. I said, hey, uh, how much are your pigs? And he said, he messaged me back and he said, well, they're this price, but hey, I'm glad you messaged me. Uh, my dad and I have been following you and, um, and we are thinking about building a barn. Um, so through a little bit back and forth, we ended up, uh, I ended up going up there and getting the pigs and evaluating his old barn and talking to him about his new barn. But I was really impressed. I was just kind of uh, stunned by the fact that um, it was through pigs and not through, um, you know, regular uh, interaction that we got to talk to each other about barns. And uh, I, I think it was a, got a, a supernatural um, meeting. So you guys are gonna enjoy this video. I got to talk to these guys, tour their old barn, and uh, it was a lot of fun, and I hope you enjoy it. We'll catch you on the next one. Thanks for watching. Got like hand hewn markings on all the one side, and the rest is rounded. Or right, it is odd to see. Yeah. And this, and you can see this is one piece, one beam from floor yeah. to ceiling. So, so they, uh, it's just different. I've never seen it quite like that. It's interesting. I've been in a lot of old barns, and obviously this beam was used for something else at one time. Yeah, this one this right here. here yeah. Yeah, because it's not right. <laughs> it's not joined into any. You know, there's a like a start of the mortise pocket right there in the middle. Yeah. You know, so does yeah yeah. I wish this is why I like the idea of multi generations. Right. Because th this is all lost unless you find you know yeah. unless you find someone who's related. Right. Who's old enough to find someone old enough. Right. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, because I'd like to know what what happened. Right. Did they have to rebuild part of it, or did they just whatever? I mean, yeah, it's just. And I know a lot of barns were were gabled before the Civil War, and then after the Civil War, you know, gambrel roof come along, got popular, and people started taking gable roofs off and putting gambrel roofs on. And that's why a lot of times you'll see a mix of sawn and hewn timbers in the barn. Yeah. So old part of the barn and then some of the new. We've had three different people come uh, to, my cousin does roofing, has done it done high rises down in Florida. And he's like, oh, I'd love to do it, my, my first cousin. Yeah. And uh, he said, but no, he said, I'll just look and see what needs cutting out and replacing, but I'm just gonna put pearl in across there and put a steel roof on it. Yeah. And then that's what the Amish guy said. Right. He said, that's the best way to do it. But then the college guy's like, well, let's rip it all off. Yeah. And, you know, and, yeah, I mean, I just couldn't even think of how are you gonna control the mess of that? Cause you have asphalt and then see if it's shake or whatever it is. It shake shingles on yeah, there, that's for sure. What, yeah, what shape? Kind of heavy. Yeah. Typically that's what I found when I pour barns down is they have a, a layer of wood shakes first and then asphalt shingles and then eventually steel. So this would be about the size of your 40 by 60 then wood floor up or is this a little taller? Yeah, this yeah, this would be about the same size, and uh, ours has well, same. very similar to what you see. Only I don't know how there's high that is. this beam is up all almost all the way well up to the top of the right to the, where the where the roof breaks. But the way I reason I designed it that way is because um, the the original customer wanted to put a loft on each side for people to sit on because it was a wedding barn. Oh yeah. Yeah. And then they have um, two, a stairwell, a dual stairwell, 
comes down two stairs down to one and it comes down in the center right here. And then, uh, of course, it's open all in along the center for that big cathedral. Oh, yeah, for that effect. I know. I know that's the part about putting a loft in there. I tried to, I tried to tell them, well, you know, if you don't put a loft in there, just build a second building. Right. right. I said, um, we can have church in there. Yeah. <laughs> Well, <laughs> I mean, man, I could you imagine a church prettier than this? Oh, yeah. <laughs> well, we've got a, um, a 40 by 84, I believe, Gambrel Pavilion, which could be sided. It's just, yeah. it's just the, the, way they, the, way it, the way they originally wanted it. And that one is actually rented out in, uh, down in the southeast part of Michigan. Uh, they have weddings out of that every weekend. Okay, yeah. so if uh, I, I've often, I've actually had a couple preacher pastors call me and say, "Hey, can we build a barn for a church? You know, and rent it. I mean, rent it out for weddings." I'm like, yeah, "That's a great idea," because then, then your congregation isn't paying the bill every month for that mortgage, which is a big stressor for congregations. What I'm doing right now with mine, and we did a lot, of, we've done a lot of back and forth with this. We even developed a special bracket for, for being able to put the, just the piers in, build your barn, and then pour your concrete floor later. Uh, it's called the two-stage bracket. It's not what I recommend anymore, but it still would work. Um, where you just put your piers down, you put this bracket in, it's got a false floor about four inches. So the post sits four inches off the bottom of the bracket. And so then you just come in and you pour your floor uh, over it, you know, around your posts. So your posts wouldn't be in the floor, they'd be above the floor, but still on that bracket. Um, the reason I don't recommend that anymore is because you can just, I, what I'm doing on mine is I created a form that's 16 inches wide, uh, that's six inches thick. And then I just poked my post holes down inside of that and, and poured them. And then I'm just going to pour that that one line where the posts are going. So on that 40 by 60, you would have four of those uh, going down the length of the barn, of course, and then the, the two on the ends. And then so you'd have footings with piers all the way around. And then you could come in and pour your floor, floor after that. So it's a little bit more concrete than just the piers, but but then you would have you wouldn't have the problem with the problem with say say you wanted to pour the the pier up to the floor level. The problem with that is, you know, when you pour around it, you're going to have big circles around all your posts. And right. It's kind of, I don't know if you really care about that, but uh, some people do. You know, they don't want to have that. Yeah, they don't want to have it looking right, like that. Right. Yeah. Where if you've know. got just I'm a single, here, but yeah. Right. But you're talking just doing a straight right. line. Straight line, and then and then when you pour your floor, you just you're all straight lines. So. Yeah, yeah. Instead of having circles, you just got one line, which right. looks natural anyway. It's one straight line. Yeah, I got you. Yeah, I think I, I think you have a video doing that too. Yeah, I, I did a little bit on that. Yeah, not, not yeah. yeah, not the whole thing. Right. Was that the one where you're like pouring the pouring the foundation for a hundred bucks? Or yeah. Yep, yep. Please tell me that wasn't twenty years ago that no. we could still keep it kind of cheap. I, well, I, with inflation, I yeah, figured, yeah. I figured it's about one hundred fifty now. Yeah. Well, was, yeah. But it was, you know, Portland was a hundred bucks for all those, you know. Yeah. All I bought was the Portland cement, you know. Yeah. You gotta, right. I dug my own gravel out of the gravel bank. Yeah, you told a story yeah. that my grandpa's brother, my great uncle, uh -huh. he, he, he dug his own basement yeah. after the house was built. Yeah. And he oh, just dug it, and dug it and dug it and you know, he kept yeah. digging and then that's the way he poured the concrete walls. Right. And, and I mean, what what's crazy about his basement, Aaron, is when, when you went in his basement, um, the city grew around him. He was out in the country downstate near Detroit okay. and the city grew around his house and it was like, that, I mean, I knew it was a good 50 years old, that basement. Yeah. Just smooth concrete, it never cracked. I don't know what he did. Mm. And he painted it old battleship gray. Huh. You know, the whole basement floor and all. Right. And I, I used to always say he had passed away when I was little, but as I when I became an adult, I'm like, I wish I could have picked his brain as to what he did. Right. Know? Because it, it definitely isn't like cinder block or most of the basements in huh. that area of the newer build constructions right. done by 
contract yeah. would crack, crack get yeah. water, and whatever he did didn't. Right. You know, I don't know what he did different. Yeah. But yeah. 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 I wish I, I wish I could have picked his brain or been you know yeah. a little older yeah, and helped. <laughs> yeah. A lot. Of, yeah. That's that's the thing too. A lot of knowledge is lost. Yeah. It that's is. A shame. It is. Maybe yeah. it's less water. I don't know. I don't know. It was in a swampy area where he built that, but who knows know. what he did? He might have. He might have dug the yard up and put some gravel in just yeah. to drain it, you know, some tiling. Yeah, I know. But yeah, it was... Uh, it's hard to get concrete to not crack. <laughs> yeah, it is. It is, you know. Which, maybe it was on the outside. Who knows what he did? I mean, I'll, I'll never know now because family doesn't even own the house anymore. Yeah. But yeah, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, you can tell. You can see where the old roof line is of the whatever was attached. Well, oh, it was a milk okay. parlor. No, I do know the that. The house is attached over there. Okay. It had uh, five stanchions in it. Yeah. Okay. Five stanchion milk parlor. Gotcha. And uh, yeah, hmm. surprised it wasn't owned by Dutch because there was a lot of Dutch up here. If you go over towards Ellsworth, Dutch settlers, you know, but uh, they said it was Bohemian people. But yeah. Huh. But you could tell, even like I was t telling my boys, I said, see the stairway? Right. And that one old timer, like I said, he lived to be 90 something, but he's been, he's been dead now for a while. But he said, oh no, 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 this was a loose hay barn. And they would pull their wagons right up. Yep. So he almost made it sound like there was an open area here mm -hmm. to the basement. Oh, okay. And those windows weren't even there out the front. Oh, okay. That that was kind of a later thing. Right. So mm -hmm. it, it had been modified in his lifetime in like the 40s or what 50s. What we do? We just got rid of hay shoots, right? Yeah, and there were, yeah, there were hay okay. shoots hay shoot here to huh. throw hay down in the lower area. Huh? But yeah, the loggers used it, the bottom area for their horses and, and the milk parlor area. But, huh. But yeah, that burned and, and yeah, he just laughed at me when I said, well, I'm kind of worried about the way it's leaning. And he goes, man, uh, that barn's been leaning like that since 1948. <laughs> you know, he, said, he said, it actually just kind of settled, it stopped. It stopped. Huh. And then that college, the, the, the guy who went to college for architecture and stuff, he said, actually the whole roof system and everything uh -huh. is designed as such that it kind of yeah. Supports itself right. really, you know, yeah. it, it, everything is key to supporting it. So I've, he wasn't too worried. I've either. seen yeah. barns that are sitting on big rocks yeah. that, in the corners. Yeah, because <laughs> yeah. 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 oh, there in North it's Carolina. a box that's designed, like you said, to be yeah. self-supporting. So it, yeah. it doesn't need. You just need something to sit on. It yeah. doesn't need to be. You know, yeah, in North Carolina, there would be four corner stones, basically. Yeah, maybe yeah. some in the middle, depending on how long it was. Yeah. And you, you had the breeze right through. I've seen them where chickens were kept under, right. or chickens were kept above, and the hogs underneath, oh, yeah. because the hogs go crazy eating after the chicken droppings, oh, which yeah. kind of makes me wonder about eating the pork. Right. But, but it's just the way the old people did things, yeah. you know. And yeah, it was. Yeah. It was only down in North Carolina. It was the the barn woods mostly. Um, horizontal. Oh, okay. I don't. I don't know why there's a difference between. Huh. I grew up in North Carolina. Okay. I don't know what the difference is, and you won't ever see a barn without batting boards in the south. Okay. You never do. And uh, but up here, I see it.